Hello and welcome to another video in the Lean Stacks Technical Instructional Series. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to provision an EC2 instance within Amazon Web Services. Let's get started. EC2 instances are virtual servers within the Amazon Web Services ecosystem. So today we're going to talk about EC2. So this is the EC2 dashboard. On the left side, you can navigate through the menu to view various subsections of EC2. Uh, we are focused today on provisioning a new instance. So let's click on the Instances menu item from the left side toolbar. You can see that within the listing of EC2 instances, uh, there are two main sections. The top panel uh, shows a list of all the EC2 instances which I have provisioned within a given AWS region. So in the top right hand corner of the screen, you may select the drop down, it's the second drop down, and select various regions for AWS. Right now, I am using the US West Oregon Data Center. And the listing in the top panel of my EC2 instances page shows that I have one EC2 instance. It is currently stopped, meaning it's not running, obviously. So let's provision a new instance. So to get started, click the Launch Instance button. AWS will now walk you through several steps to provision your EC2 instance. The first step is choosing an Amazon Machine Image or AMI. An AMI is Amazon's acronym for a server template. Um, these are typically an operating system, be it Linux or Windows, and uh, some variety of packages installed. Um, it could be a very minimal installation, which is uh, what we're going to go for today. Or it could be an AMI that has been contributed by an AWS user or organization, um, which contains a specific set of packages. From the left side, the quick start, uh, you see a variety of the most popular um, server templates or AMIs for you know, popular operating systems. Amazon Linux, which is based upon CentOS, um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUS, Ubuntu Server, Microsoft Windows Server, uh, and you can continue to scroll and see various flavors of those operating systems. Um, when you can save uh, your own, create your own AMIs from EC2 instances that you build um, and install packages on them and then save them. So here's an example of that uh, where in my AWS account I have created um, a Java application server and save that so that I can provision new EC2 instances from that later. And then the Amazon Marketplace is where you'll find AMIs uh, that I was discussing before, where organizations like CentOS um, have contributed their AMIs uh, publicly, uh, which you can use. Today, we are going to select Amazon Linux, um, mainly because it's based upon CentOS, which is a, a very robust enterprise Linux operating system. Um, and it, become, it, it comes pre-installed with uh, the Amazon uh, command line interface or the AWS command line interface. Um, so it, it's a very stable and sturdy platform upon which uh, we can build uh, a virtual server. So simply collect, uh, select the or click the select button next to the AMI uh, you wish to choose. For step two, we are going to select an instance type. An instance type is simply a, the size of the virtual server um, that will be provisioned. <clears throat> so as you can see, there are various families, starting with T. Uh, there's M, which is, uh, these are both kind of general use, the ones that begin with T and M. If you scroll down, there's 
the C family, which is compute optimized family, you'll see a higher number of virtual CPUs. Um, you'll see uh, the the G family, which which are uh, graphic processing optimized, the R family, which is memory optimized, um, and the D family, which is storage optimized, the D and I families. So we're going to select T2. Um, it's simply for illustration purposes. This will give us one virtual CPU, um, one gig of RAM, and uh, as you'll see on, on an upcoming screen, uh, we'll configure the attached uh, disk volume for that server. Simply click the next button on the bottom right hand corner to proceed. The, th the third page uh, allows you to configure a number of options for your server. If you are working uh, within an organization that has multiple uh, or a, a dedicated VPC network within AWS, you may need to select that from the network drop-down. As you can see on this page, uh, each option has an info icon next to it, and when you hover over that, it provides a brief explanation of what this option is. If you need more detail about these options, you can click the support drop-down in the upper right-hand corner and view the documentation uh, resources for provisioning EC2 instances. Um, today, there's no need to alter any of these options. So let's simply click the next button in the bottom right hand corner. For step four, uh, we're configuring the attached disk volume for our virtual server. Um, the default is to use general purpose SSD and for our purposes that, that will suffice. Um, you can s select uh, both the IOPS based SSD or magnetic uh, storage. So we're going to stick with general purpose SSD, um, which gives pretty high bursted um, IO, uh, I, uh, IO transactions per second. Um, the default size is eight gigs. If you want to provision more or less, um, you can do so. Um, so we are going to leave it at eight gigs. That, that's plenty for today's illustration. So click the next button in the bottom right hand corner to proceed to the next step. So step five allows us to create tags for our instance. I recommend that you come up with some sort of standardized naming scheme that perhaps includes um, an environment uh, identifier like you know maybe D for development or E for engineering, um, P for production, so on and so forth. Uh, your organization may already have a naming scheme. So for for our demonstration purposes, um, I'm going to use um, EN for engineering um, and then a, a unique identifier. So one, two, three, four, five, one. So a, a six digit number um, serves as the unique identifier. So this is our first server within the engineering environment. Um, you can create any number of tags to help you organize your AWS resources. Almost every service within AWS facilitates tagging. So sometimes organizations will add a department tag um, and this can be, you know, for example, if it was for marketing, um, you could uh, say that this server was being created for the marketing department. Um, perhaps if you bill back uh, to those departments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so let's move to the next page and configure the security groups for the server. Security groups uh, determine what ports are open on the virtual server um, and where those ports may be accessed from. So what source IP addresses or IP address ranges. We will create a new security group, um, one that facilitates SSH access on port 22. SSH will allow us to maintain access and maintain our server. So let's call this SSH2. I already have one called SSH1 from a previous video. And this will allow this security group configuration to be reused later. Uh, when provisioning other EC2 instances. 
So let's select review and launch in the lower right hand button. We've completed configuring uh, the EC2 instance. On this screen or page you can review all of the configura configuration options which have been selected on the previous six steps and at this time you can change any which uh, prior to launching the EC2 instance. For us everything is okay so I'm going to click the blue launch button in the lower right hand corner. Now we need to select a key pair so once AWS launches this server um, it's always accessible using a, a Linux user on the server named EC2-user. Um, that is the standard user uh, which AWS creates on, on all EC2 instances and the way they lock down or, or authenticate users to the server is through an SSH key pair. Um, so as you can see I have previously uh, created a key pair named LeanStacks Demo, um, but let's go ahead and create a new key pair. We'll call it LeanStacks Demo 2. Um, notice the launch instance button is grayed out. We have to download that key pair, and as you can see within my browser, the key pair file, LeanStacksDemo2.pem, was just downloaded to my machine. We have to download the key pair file before we can click the Launch Instances button, which I will do now. So AWS has started launching my EC2 instance. Within the green informational box at the top of this page, I can see that uh, AWS is telling me that it's launching my instance. Um, here's the unique identifier of the instance being launched. Um, below that is a variety of links that I can learn more about EC2 or what to do next. But for now, I'm going to click on the link for the unique identifier and go back to my instances page um, where we can see this new instance, EN-0001, uh, being launched. Um, the instance state is running. Um, it's, it's really just being brought up as you can see the status checks are still initializing um, and in the bottom panel if I select the status checks you can see that that it's reporting that they are still initializing at this time. The monitoring tab on the bottom panel once this server is up and running this is where we can view uh, various metrics about the server uh, related to CPU utilization, disk I.O., network I.O., um, and various status checks. And on the tags tab um, I can create or modify the tags that I'm using to essentially label or organize uh, this particular EC2 instance. I'm going to switch back to the description tab. Um, on the description tab, um, there's a, just a, a whole variety of information here, um, but uh, what may be of greatest import uh, to you are the IP addresses that have AWS has assigned to this EC2 instance. On the left side are the private IP addresses. Um, so if you have server to server um, or EC2 instance to EC2 instance communication that you need uh, to have occurring between various components of an application that you're constructing, for example, um, you would want to use the private IP addresses. Not only is it going to be much faster uh, for your application components to communicate across private IP addresses, it's more secure, and it also doesn't, you don't incur the cost uh, that uh, if you sent the communication out to the internet and then back into the application through the public IP address, um, not only would that be less secure, but you would pay for that public bandwidth utilization um, that, that you incur by doing the communication that way. The public IP addresses, however, are what you're going to use for SSH access to your server. So enough time has gone by now that our server um, is probably started up and SSH is running. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how to SSH to that server uh, using the uh, key pair file that we downloaded. Okay, 
I've opened a terminal window on my local machine and I've changed directory to the location where the PEM file has been downloaded. As you can see, I also have the PEM file from the, the previous key pair that we saw on the, uh, the page as we were provisioning the EC2 instance. Notice um, I've listed the files in this directory. Um, notice the uh, file permissions on that uh, prior uh, key pair. It's read-only uh, for just the, the owner of the file. So we need the first thing we need to do is uh, change the file permissions on the LeanStacks demo 2pem file to match that. Um, so those permission settings are 400 uh, to make it read only for the owner. You can see the changes have taken effect here. So now we need to use SSH with the dash I option. Uh, the dash I option allows you to specify uh, the key pair file uh, to use for authenticating uh, us to this new EC2 instance. So SSH dash I supply the, the relative path or full path to the PEM file we want to use. And remember our username is EC2 user. Now I am going to copy the public DNS name um, for our EC2 instance and paste it in. So the full command uh, you can see on the screen here. Press enter. Uh, my operating system is making sure that I want to trust uh, this host. I'll say yes. And we have successfully connected to our server. Um, we're greeted with the, the little banner, uh, which says, hey, you're on EC2 using Amazon Linux. And it's telling us that there's one package we need to update uh, for security updates. So that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look for more unscripted videos in the future. I'll walk you through updating the packages on your EC2 instance, installing Java, installing Apache Tomcat, and even getting the Jenkins Continuous Integration Server up and running on an EC2 instance so that you can build the applications you're building using LeanStacks uh, technologies. That's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's LeanStacks unscripted technology instruction video. To find more information about LeanStacks, go to leanstacks.com. Thanks for watching.